welcome back to the always reading book club it is your girl kiki reader and we're gonna do a whole series in one video so this is the beach summer secret series by Haley summers and it's books one through six so the chapters were like really short they're like six chapters um per book none of them have names it's just book one through book six so we're going to cover all of those starting now we meet our main character jennifer o'neill she's 48 she's a d4c and she has a one son his name's matthew and matthew is married to a woman named katie loveheart who comes from like a really wealthy family so matthew's 24 and katie is 28 and jennifer does not like his wife <laughs> jennifer lives in miami she's a lawyer um, she runs a male practice um, law firm and it is not doing the best it's actually kind of sinking so she's in her apartment living and telling her how great of a time him and his wife had the wife burnt the turkey he dropped a dish but it was the best meal they'd ever had Jennifer's response to his story was I bet like being really grumpy so then Matthew was like, is that so wrong for her to want to help me? What's wrong with that? And Jennifer's like, it becomes an issue when they're trying to turn you to something that you're not. And she starts talking about the girl's age. The girl is only four years older than the boy, but she's trying to make it out to be like the woman's like 20 years older than him. <laughs> so clearly this bitch is just miserable. Like, this is probably one of the first times that I cannot absolutely stand this main character. <laughs> so then Matthew was like, you know what? What do you want to do? Do you want to cut me out of your life? And it's sad because it's like the girl hasn't done anything bad, it seems, really. But clearly, she has an issue with rich people. So clearly, something probably happened with her and that's why she's acting this way or she could just have actual you know intuition that this is a bad person but right now it just seems like she is just <laughs> she's just projecting <laughs> so we find out that she was married to his dad for like 20 years and when uh matthew turned 16 so all this stuff you're making up is in your head it's not what it's not reality and so then she tells her she's moving back in because apparently Viola's losing her apartment and Jennifer's like you know okay fine you know my firm isn't doing so great anyway so we both we both might be out of a place in a few months <laughs> and Viola's like yeah I figured you weren't doing too well either I'm like oh my gosh so they're gonna meet up and have dinner when she gets off the phone she goes through her mail and she sees something unmarked but it says it came from uh tybee island georgia which is where she grew up she hasn't been there in like 12 years since her mom died and so what's written on it it just says i know who you are and so this of course freaks her out jennifer goes to meet viola at a local piece of joint and we get a little backdrop on viola she used to live in michigan that's where she's from she was a third grade teacher she got tired of it and she wanted a big change she wanted to become an actress but she didn't want to move to a big city um so she decided to move to miami um her landlord doesn't fix the stuff in the apartment she claims that's why she hasn't paid the rent in three months <laughs> she says she has money <laughs> she just doesn't want to give it to the old woman so they're talking about the letter and Jennifer starts talking about the fact that she's been kind of thinking about leaving Miami and Viola's been having that same thought as well. They still want to stay in the South um, and they start talking about different possibilities, different areas. And Jennifer realizes, of course, you know, Tabby Island would be a great place to possibly live. She still has a beach house that her mother left to her. Um, when she died and she still pays for the cleaning service that you know maintains it so Viola's like you know we should drive up you know give it a few days give the letter to the police there and kind of see what's going on and she says nothing happened in her childhood that her mother was pretty much a recluse 
she didn't have any real friends because she never really tried to get close to anybody she says there's no secrets that there could possibly be you know but i don't believe her i think she's lying <laughs> she does say if she gets another letter that then she'll go to tybee island and do a little research so about a week later she gets another letter it says the same thing i know who you are so she of course now is officially freaked out and when viola comes home viola herself was about to get robbed on her way home she had to pull her gun out so she's like i am done with this city <laughs> and so jennifer tells her about the letter and she's like yeah we need to leave we need to go to tabby island and we need to file a report and we need to figure out what's really going on the phone rings freaks out jennifer um it's a man they sound like they're trying to disguise their voice and they say i know you got my letters i didn't hear you but you need to come back to Tabby Island. You, you know, you need to come back. And then they hang up. So now Jennifer is like terrified. But when she tells Viola what the person said, she's like, yeah, we need to go. You know, you're probably going to be able to find out and, you know, be more safer if you go where the wolves are. You know, <laughs> she's like, you'll be right underneath the enemy's, you know, territory they get to tabby island they get pulled over <laughs> um it's the chief of police his name is isaac brace and he actually used to be friends with jennifer that was like her one friend um when they were kids so he of course is like shocked to see her because he never thought she would come back and we find out he's a divorcee as well viola blurts out about the letters and the phone calls and he says you know we'll get right on it but jennifer wanted to go home get a little rest and he's like um go ahead he was he pulled her over because her tail light um was out and so he's like i'll fix that for you tomorrow he's like and, and we'll deal with the whole stalker mess they get to the house it's pouring raining outside um still looks the same even smells like peppermint which is how it always smelled and that shocks her um and then while they're inside someone comes up to the door it's the new neighbor so the last time she was there, there was no house next to hers, but someone's built a little house next door to her beach house and the neighbor's name is Wiley. So he's in the doorway. He's coming over to introduce himself and also to tell her that he had saw a car a couple of months back just sitting in the driveway. We get a little backdrop on Wiley. Um, he's a mystery writer. He's from Brooklyn. He was married, but his wife was laundering money through her salon for the mafia for mafia family so she went to prison and then she divorced him so he's lived in a few other cities and basically came here and felt like this was the right place for him to push out a book so he has a publisher and his book is um due pretty soon and he's got writer's block <laughs> poor baby <laughs> she winds up telling him about the letters that she received and he of course is like because he's a mystery writer he has contacts um you know investigators and things like that and so he tells her to you know let me know i can get in contact with him and she's like no nah, we're just gonna let the police handle it and he's like all right but they can only do so much the next morning they were going to go into town to get some breakfast but isaac called and says you know i'll bring over donuts and coffee and some other stuff and so he gets over there while he comes over he needs some sugar he's like yeah i know it's like in the movies but i really do need some sugar for my coffee <laughs> so while he's there they get a phone call jennifer answers it and we'll call we'll just say it's a stalker they're like you've made it back i know your secret and then they hang up again and they also say you know we need to talk and then they hang up so isaac says he's gonna have to have someone put a trace on the call and then a few minutes later the phone rings again but viola answers and she doesn't let the person talk she just says whoever you are um we have ties to the mafia because of our next door neighbor <laughs> and if you keep bothering us you're gonna be swimming with the fishes so we find out that not, uh, Wiley's nephew is actually going to be coming to stay with him because he's gotten into some trouble and in New York, Brooklyn. And he's now in North Carolina because he got into a fight. And so clearly this kid, his name's Joey. He's going to be a problem. 
So Isaac dropped the coffee cup by mistake. And when Jennifer went to clean it up, um, she went in the closet and a rush of memories hit her. And she needed to like take a walk. So Viola was like, don't worry about it. I'll clean it up. Um, the next door neighbor, Wiley, um, is pissed because now he knows he has to go to North Carolina to pick up his nephew because they won't let him fly. <laughs> and so Wiley asked Jennifer, you know, to watch his house. And she's like, say please. And he's like, I don't have time for this, you know. <laughs> and Isaac's like, you two need to get along. But they're like oil and water. It's so funny to read them going back and forth. And so Isaac does tell Jennifer, it will be a nice thing to do. You know, he did watch her house when you weren't here, you know. And so she starts thinking, okay, maybe I do need to be a little nicer. <laughs> and she's also like, you know what? She really does want to make this place her home, you know, for at least a good while for her and Viola. And we also uh, can see that Isaac is sweet on Viola. He thinks she's really pretty and he likes her energy. They like the same kind of weird stuff, cartoons, different things like that, which isn't weird to me, you know, but to some people, it's like you're an adult, you shouldn't like cartoons, but <laughs> so they like the same quirky things. So Wiley comes back into town with his nephew, Joey, he is a character. He's calling Jennifer, babe. Um, he, he's an absolute mess. <laughs> he comes over for coffee and sugar again. Um, because he hasn't had time to go to the store. This is, he, he's over there as well. It's just, it's it's fun to read the banter between and Wiley. It's just absolutely hilarious. Because Wiley's ready to just, like, take the kid out. It's, it's so funny. Viola and Jennifer have a conversation. And Viola is honest about the, she was, wasn't as honest before. She tells Jennifer she really didn't have a lot of money. She didn't have the money to pay her rent. And she really did need this, you know, and Jennifer's like, you know what? It, it's fine. I'm happy you're here. We're going to make this place our home. So she gets, so the phone rings. She thinks it's the stalker, but it was Isaac. He was just calling to see if he could take him out to lunch the next day. And she, of course, was like, yeah, that'll be fine. I just need to talk to my son. And they have this conversation about her issue with her son and she doesn't really seem to have a leg to stand on, but she just feels like it's her mother's intuition. Um, so we'll see. The next day they meet up, they go to the diner, and it looks ex the exact same way it did last time she saw it all those years ago. Like, absolutely nothing has changed. The waitress was someone named Faith, who used to babysit her when she was younger. And Faith's husband, uh, he owns the diner. And... Um, they were saying how they needed some help and Viola's like that's great because I need a job <laughs> so she's going to come back later when it slows down fill out whatever's necessary so she can work um Isaac asked Jennifer you know if she called her son she chickened out um she even said something stupid like you know oh if I called him he would just get mad at me and Viola was like what makes you think that he would do that you know like there's nothing your son has ever said that would make you think he would do that and you realize she knows it too it's her own bitterness and she realized she needs to stop doing that she's just a broken individual it's sad so then Wiley comes in with his nephew Joey and of course he's just as disrespectful as ever <laughs> and we find out um that Wiley had to jack him up just outside of the diner because the boy's mouth he just he's too much he apparently is running from some wise guys up there in new york the mom was scared and was like he's either gonna wind up dead or in jail so she wanted wiley to get him so a week goes by she doesn't get a phone call and then boom she gets one the person basically saying the same thing i'm really sorry i didn't mean to scare you but i do know your secret and we do need to talk but they still won't say who they are. They keep pausing. It's so weird. And then right after the call, right after that call, she calls Isaac. And Isaac's like, well, they're not staying on the phone long enough for us to trace it. So the only thing it's going to really be is harassment. It's not like it's going to be some major charge on the person. And she's a lawyer. She knows that. So Wiley comes over. Dude wants sugar again. And I don't know. It just seems weird that he keeps coming over there for sugar. <laughs> And I wonder, like, is he trying to get a story? You know what I mean? Like, or is he a part of this? I don't know. It's just making me think 
um i wonder what's going on with him so they have a conversation they go back and forth about his writer's block um and she talks about wanting to reopen a practice and she decides it would be nice hold on let me say this correctly she decides it would be better for me to just be nice to the man there's no purpose in me being mean to him jennifer has a flashback of when she was younger and her mother was having a conversation with her on the beach and her mother was asking her you know basically why she wasn't friends with the other girls and she said it was because they were rich and they were snobbyish you know and her mother talked about a couple of girls that didn't seem as bad and she was like they're not as bad but they're under the spell of the the one that's the bitch you know so there's no point <laughs> her loved art um she loved drawing she loved paintings but she had decided she was going to be a lawyer and her mother was like well why do you want to do that that's not what's really in your heart but she wants to be that because she wants to prove that she's somebody so basically these rich kids make her feel like she's nothing and she wants to become a success just to show them that she is somebody and that's what her mother fears is what she's going to base all of her choices on and not base them on her heart and in the end she's going to pay for that and her mother had said when you get in your late 40s you'll come back to the island some strange circumstances will bring you back and i fear my past is what is is something you're going to have to deal with and so she's just kind of talking um she brings up about her dad but she had told her that the dad was dead so i'm like i don't think the dad's dead you know and i wonder if he's one of you know the rich men on the island or something you know <laughs> days later wiley comes over um for lunch because joey burnt up the kitchen <laughs> the child he's 14 and he was trying to cook um some fried oysters and yeah grease fire <laughs> so they come over they have lunch she offers you know to take them to savannah to river street so they can maybe have some ice cream and you know she figures you know she's trying to be a better neighbor you know that's who her mother would be and that's who she is at her core she's not this mean bitter person that she's turned into so she gets a letter from the post office but she has to sign for it and it's from a law firm and she knew it was like a really posh high-end one someone that normally handles trust funds opens the letter and you know of course Wiley's like well what does it say she doesn't say anything she's like oh it's nothing and she runs upstairs well she calls the law firm and the guy lets her know yeah you got the letter yeah that's right you know you're about to start receiving a tremendous amount of money each month but apparently she can't know who and where the money's coming from so now she's like okay what's really going on you know so later that evening jennifer and viola are on their way to dinner and she you know is like you know what let me go back and see if they want to come out to dinner at the barbecue joint in savannah on river street so she goes to wiley wiley's house and asks him you know if he wants to go but she can smell the pasta he's making spaghetti so um it does smell good but she still offered him you know if he wanted to go to dinner him and joey with them and he was rude he was like don't you don't you see i'm cooking like he was just so mean <laughs> and she got pissed off and he was just like there's nothing but italian food like why would i want to eat something else but she was just like you can try something else you can expand your palate you know but he was just so rude and she was like you know what screw this you know she left and joey comes down and wiley and him have a conversation and it's about his behavior the kid's just not seeing the light and we find out that the kid i guess whatever he did had his mom get hurt so whoever it was came to to the house or the apartment and roughed up his mom so his mom is now staying in connecticut with her doctor friend he still doesn't see or see what's wrong or you know he his brain is just not processing it um we think he stole some money from the some from the mafia family and because that's the only reason why they would come and do something like that so he's still talking like he's a big guy and he's like you know i can go back and i can fix it you know but he's just a mess 
so wiley and joey have a trip uh they take a trip for a few days we find out they went to florida we don't know what for just yet um she hasn't heard anything from him since before they went on the trip she was trying to get a the price of a fence so she could put it around her home (laughs) But she's got to wait like two weeks for someone just to come out to give her an estimate. And Viola's just kind of like, you know, there's been no problems. Just let sleeping dogs lie. And so she gets a phone call. It's from the person. And they're like, why didn't you take the money? And then they're like, yeah, I screwed this up. I didn't mean to. I keep messing up. But they wouldn't say who they are. And she's like, can you just please tell me who you are? But they wouldn't say. So she called Isaac. Isaac's going, you know, saying the same thing. There's nothing we can do because the person's not giving enough information. So the cab driver that dropped off Wiley and Joey, he's, he's, his name's Pete Jones. He looks familiar to Jennifer, but she can't place him quite just yet. Isaac comes over um, because Vi- Viola's going to make her super hot chili. And it was super hot even without her having her ghost peppers. Poor Isaac sitting there can barely eat it. <laughs> Pete Jones comes over. He comes to speak with Isaac. Um, but he also wants to see Jennifer because he does remember her. He was really good friends with her mother. And then she kind of remembered him a little bit. And she realized that he was a guy that used to come over. Um, he had took over for their pastor when the pastor had got uh, had hurt his back. And he would come and visit with her mom and stuff. And so we find out he's going to wind up moving into Wiley's house because uh savannah isn't what it used to be he says it's not as safe and he's got a smaller apartment because he sold the house that he had when his wife passed years ago because they didn't have any children it was just too big of a house so he's pretty much gonna help out wiley with this uh damn boy (laughs) so they're at dinner and joey is mouthing off and well this is what really led Wiley to say, you know what, you need to stay with us. They were having dinner and Joey mouthed off and Pete hit him in the mouth and the boy stopped right then and there. And he didn't say another word. He even washed the dishes. And so that's when Wiley was like, yeah, I think you need to move in. (laughs) Pete tells Jennifer how much she looks like her mother and that, you know, her mother was such a great person and that he has some things to tell her but that this isn't the right time. Now, I don't like that. Don't say shit like that to me. You know, just when you're ready to tell me, then you tell me, but don't like do that ominous bullshit. I don't like that. (laughs) That irked me with old man Pete. So Jennifer does feel like whatever she finds out is probably going to make everything fall apart, and she's afraid of that. So Jennifer calls the attorney again, And he's telling her the same thing. You know, I cannot give you any information about the person that's the payer. I can't. Um, And she was just like, you know, I don't, you know, you want to give me this money, but like someone's been stalking me. You know, this could put my life in danger. And he's like, it doesn't matter. I can't give you any information. He was like, but if you want to accept the money, you know, it's still on the table. You can still do it. She gets pissed off and hang up, hangs up. Um, it's raining outside. Joey comes over. He's hungry because Pete and Wiley went to Savannah, left him there, but they turned off the gas and the breaker because they don't trust him. <laughs> so Jennifer takes pity on him. And um, she's like, well, you want some coffee, you know, and then she was going to make him some stew, but then they wind up eating pizza and well ordering pizza and so while they're sitting there he kind of opens up a little bit we find out that his mother's dating a doctor and the doctor guy never really tried to get to know him he was always just kind of like kid where's your mom which is crappy you know what i mean like a person's got a kid they only got the one kid you know and you act like you can't be bothered with them that's kind of fucked up and sad joey also says that you know uncle wiley thinks that you know mom's you know a saint but she's not you know and Jennifer takes pity on him you know she feels bad for him you know so she calls Isaac and tells him you know she's going to spend the day with Joey I forgot about this he got in trouble because he threw a brick (laughs) and bust and like broke the window in the library he admitted it that it was him that did it so he's got community service so She's like, he'll spend the day with me. 
and Isaac's like, yeah, that's fine. No problem. Hey, Jennifer walks out on the pier. She sees Wiley. At first, she was going to try and avoid him, um, but then he looked awful. So she goes and she talks to him, and we find out that when he went to Florida, he went to go talk to his publisher. Um, his publisher feels like he needs to go to a therapist because he is blocked. Um, they have given him more time, an extension, for him to complete his book. He also found out that his ex-wife has gotten out and she's remarried. So he's having a lot of emotions going on. They have a great conversation. She leaves him alone. On her way back um, from the pier, she sees a strange man um, drive off. And I'm quite sure that was her stalker. So a situation pops up with Joey. <laughs> he done punched the kid in the nose and, bro and broke the little kid's nose. <laughs> So Wiley's immediate reaction was like, this fucking kid. But Jennifer's reaction was like, uh-uh, you tell me what happened. She went full lawyer mode. And it's a good thing she did because we got more of the story. So basically what happened is he got this little girlfriend and these other guys, like this, this, this little boy, he likes the girl, but she's never liked him. So the guy's been like planning on jumping Joey you know, the guy and his friends want to like jump Joey. So Joey walked up to the guy in the library. No, I'm sorry. I said that wrong. So the little boy walked up to Joey while he was with the little girl in the library. And he called Joey some stuff, but Joey didn't care about that. But he called the girl a smelly fish. And that's when he just punched the shit out of the little boy. So Isaac was kind of, was kind of like, you know, this is going to cause a problem because the dude's father is like a doctor and basically you know this is going to cause a big problem and so jennifer's like i don't care about that the law is the law joey was threatened he reacted and you let them know you let that dad know that we'll see them in court like she was not letting up about this and joy was just kind of like you know you can just take me to jail <laughs> if that's what you want to do just do it and he puts his arm out you know when he made the comment and he makes the comment, you know, like, you're no different than the cops in New York. You know, they would see me getting beat, you know, my head smashed in all the time. And they would just walk by and laugh. And Isaac felt so horrible. And he just puts his arm out, grabs the kid, hugs him. And uh, Joey let out a couple tears. And he realized, you know, there is so much going on with this little kid that they didn't really realize. And... They just need to love him. You know, he is an ass, but he does, he just, he does need to be loved. Um, so she goes home, Matthew calls her, her son calls her and he tells her that him and Katie are done. Apparently Katie only married him to make her ex jealous who had left her at the altar. And he was like, you were right, mom. He's like, you know, I'm sorry. And she's like, no, I'm sorry. Basically she still knew she knew she had been a bitch, but she apologized because she was like, you know, she knew she hadn't handled things the correct way because Matthew had been trying with her and she was not giving him like, it's a difference. If you got a bad feeling about a person, you know, and you can say that, but if you just keep necking it, you know, just keep nagging at a person about it, it turns into like something else. It doesn't feel like it's real concern. It feels like it's some other shit, which is why I thought that's what it was with her. Like, oh, she has this issue with like people with money and maybe that's why she's so upset or whatever, but she was right. The bitch won no good. <laughs> so the way that Matthew found out she was doing stuff is basically he figured something was going on and he knows someone that can like break into your email. So <laughs> That's what he did. And he saw all this correspondence with the ex-boyfriend. And she apparently had just gone on a trip out to Reno. And she had been with the ex-boyfriend. Well, fiance, shall we say. And she fucked up because they didn't sign a prenup. Because the girl had lied to her parents. She gave them some fake documents because she wanted to like get married really fast. Because she's trying to make some dude jealous. And so now he's like, you know what? And... I'm going to hit it where it hurts. I'm going to hit her pockets. And I'm like, you know what? And she deserves it. Because why would you leave? The fact that you would leave yourself that wide open to make somebody else jealous is just beyond stupid. Just to go back and fuck them. That's the part I don't understand. So you go and marry a whole other human being. Make this person believe you love them. And then 
when the other person gets jealous and they're starting to give you some attention, you go right back to fucking them. You're going to do that and expose yourself financially for that. She's an idiot and she deserves to lose her money because she's stupid. (laughs) So he's going to get a lot of money since there's no prenup. And uh, Jennifer tells him, you know, well, you can come live with me, you know. And he was like, good, because I was going to ask you (laughs) if I could come live with you, you know, once everything's settled. You know, he's like, I really need my mom right now. And it just, it made a tear fall from her eye because it made her feel so happy. Like, oh my God, my son really needs me. And that's when she realizes, yeah, all that bullshit you was doing, you really need to stop, you know, because you are capable of being a very loving parent. And that's what the fuck you, you needed to be. Even if you didn't agree with who he was with, you still should have been loving to him. That should have never wavered. So he also tells his mother that he got a phone call from a stranger and she was like, oh shit, you know, not my baby at Target. This is getting crazy. So uh, her and her son, they have a super long conversation. They get everything out. It was so beautiful to read. Um, It was what they both needed. And so he's definitely going to come to the island. Um, He tried to tell his dad, his dad didn't want to hear his dad's trash. It's just pitiful. Um, so she's happy that, you know, he wants to come live with her, be a family, have a wonderful relationship. It's just so beautiful. So a few days later, Joey and Jennifer go for a walk. They have, you know, this heart to heart. He basically tells her about his bad dreams that he has. And it's where he's walking home from school. These guys run up behind him with bats and they're, um, he runs to his apartment door. He's bamming on the door, but no one lets him in. And then he starts getting beat and he wakes up in cold sweats. So he doesn't tell her, he doesn't want her to tell his uncle Wiley, she promises. Wiley comes up, tells her about a phone call the mother that the mother that his mother had called, and she's gone off and married the doctor, and they're going to move to California, but they're not going to take Joey because he's a handful, and the doctor doesn't want him there. And so Wiley's like, I'm going to take him in. Like, that's that's it like he's gonna be with me but how fucking awful for that mother like i'm quite clearly he's a handful i get it but you're not even trying to figure out what the fuck is really going on with the kid because you don't care because you're more concerned with some fucking man that more than likely down the road it never tells us this in the book this is just my little prediction that he'll dump you for anything and you've made your whole life about some fucking man. Despicable. How the fuck could you even want someone that doesn't want your fucking kid around? Like, that shit makes no sense. She's trash. That mother is absolute trash. So while he's like, I'm taking him in, like, you know, Jennifer's like, I'll, you know, I can homeschool him. Wiley took offense to her saying that because he thought that he thought he took it as she was trying to say he couldn't do it. And she was like, no, I'm just I was just trying to be of of hell, you know. So Jennifer got pissed. I was like, fuck this. You know, she walks off and she left them to get um, Joey and Wiley. They have a conversation. Joey's like, you know, why are you always mean to her? Like, she's a nice lady. And then he's like, oh, I get it. You like her. And Wiley's like, I'm going crazy. I can't write a book and I like a crazy woman. <laughs> so then a, pa- a car pulls up to her, um, to Jennifer's house. She can see it as she's walking back up to her home, but it pulls off. So they have a showdown in the sheriff's office with the dude's dad. They got punched. He's fired up saying, you know, he's going to take Isaac's badge and all this stuff. But we find out everything he's saying is just a lot of hot air because no one in the community likes him. He's a horrible doctor. Multiple patients transfer from him. Um, he has horrible bedside manner. He doesn't care about his patient patients. His wife's a bitch as well. She treats people like they're lower than her. His father was a physician as well, but he wasn't shit either. He apparently um, ran, got ran out of town because he had a bunch of malpractice. <laughs> suits against him (laughs) so he doesn't have a he doesn't have a you know the backing of the community at all and so when isaac tells him you know a couple things he backs down 
but he's still pissed off. So Jennifer's like, you know, we're going to put a restraining order against your kid. Jennifer was going in. She went into total protection of Joey and it was so sweet. Um, the guy storms out, you know, and Isaac's like, no, I think Jennifer said, you'll get a call later dropping the charges. Watch. <laughs> a few days later, um, two things happened. Sure enough, the guy called back that night and he dropped the charges. <laughs> and then Jennifer and Viola were having a conversation. They were out by the pier and they were talking about Matthew coming and, it, and um, he's just waiting for the settlement from Katie. But the problem is Katie's trying to fight the settlement. Her parents are okay with the settlement, but she's trying to fight it. She's trying to be difficult. Um, so Pete runs up and says, Joey got jumped at the library, got hurt real bad. They've taken him to the hospital. And apparently uh, one of the boys, the same one that got, that his nose got broke, <laughs> he hit his head and he's unconscious. So he's in a coma. So they all get in the car, go to the hospital. Wiley looks so defeated. He looks so bad. Joey's going to be able to come home. He's banged up pretty bad, but he is going to be able to co come home in a little bit um, that day. Um, Jennifer goes in to talk to him, and she finds out more of the story. So there are eyewitnesses that tell that Joey got jumped, and he was just defending himself. So when he kicked the guy, the guy fell back, hit the uh, table, and was knocked out. But it was nothing that he was trying to do. He was just defending himself. So he's not going to go to jail. He's not in any kind of trouble. He's fine. But he was a little terrified, the little boy. He felt bad that something had happened to the other kid. Because he was like, that wasn't my intention. I wasn't trying to do that. And Jeff was like, I know it's okay. It's going to be okay. Joey's recovering, but he's kind of become a recluse. He basically just watches the same mafia movie over and over again. Doesn't eat too much. He's lost some weight. Um, he's really becoming a shell of himself. And then, of course, is worrying Wiley. Um, him and Jennifer go for a walk. And Matthew has moved um, to Tybee Island. So he's here. Um, he brings Viola home from work. He's actually working on a church building. So he kind of wants to be like a missionary or a preacher or something like that. That's what's close to his heart. And so... Um, her and Wiley are having a conversation and basically Wiley's thinking about, you know, maybe I need to move far, further away to like Fairbanks, Alaska, <laughs> you know, like he's, you know, she was upset. Cause she's like thinking about, you know, you, you know, taking Joey away, but she also was going to miss his ass too. Um, but he was like, or maybe, you know, I'll leave him here and I'll just leave. You know, he has that six month extension, which is the final one. But he just feels so defeated. It's so sad. Oh. So she sees a car driving past. She tries to run to get to it. They drive off, of course. She runs up to the house, tries to get Matthew to follow this car, but they lose it. Um, Joy emerges from his room. He goes into Wiley's room, uses the phone, calls and books a ticket from Savannah to Brooklyn, and says he needs to take care of some business. So, of course, you know, they're all taking off. They are going to get Joey back. So, um, he did call the house and tell Pete, you know, that sometimes you got to do things that ain't right. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, what is this child going to do? <laughs> they can't fly out because it's a bad storm. So, all the flights are grounded. So, they're just going to take up, take uh, drive up the coast, take two vehicles. It's like a 13-hour drive to New York. Isaac makes a comment to... Um, Wiley before they leave like basically like are you crazy like do you not see like this woman's crazy about you and Joey like how much you know how much longer are you going to keep going like you don't want this woman him and Viola have started to do a little dating it's so cute um he can't go with them because he's the whole you know police chief so he has to stay um but it's, it's cute. He even has a conversation while he does with Matthew because Matthew knows that he li that clearly they like each other as well. <laughs> so everyone's just kind of like, what are you waiting for? <laughs> they hit Brooklyn. Two days have passed. They don't have any information. Um, Rocky is a guy that owns the pizza parlor. Um, 
that is actually right next to the salon where Wiley's ex-wife used to run that shop. And so he had asked Rocky to reach out to one of his connects. And um, basically we find out the boys made whatever it was. He made it right. So he had stole money, but I guess he paid it all back. And everything's square, but he needs to get out of the city. So then they leave Rocky's pizza parlor and they go stand in front of the beauty shop with the empty space now. And he's having all these memories while he is. And he realizes he did need to come back and he needed to let go. Because he really did love his wife, but she never really loved him, basically. And so now he feels like he can go back to the island. He can write. He can. He's, you know, unblocked. Um, a mafia guy comes up to him as well and lets him know that everything's been made right. You need to be gone before the sun goes down. And he also told him that the little boy was at the church down the street. So they go and get him. Um, before the boy comes out, Wiley and Jennifer have a whole moment. Like Wiley kissed her and basically let her know she had done captured his whole dad, his whole heart. And she told him he had captured hers as well. And they didn't even realize it had happened, but that's what it was. And um, he said, I know I talk a certain way. Um, but she just told him, don't change. I don't want you to change. And I love that. Because if you love someone, that's who you love. You love that person. You know, if they want to change something about themselves, you know, that's fine. But it shouldn't be a conditional type of love. Well, I love you, but you have to do X, Y, and Z. You know, that condition love is bullshit. So that was, that was so sweet. And that was beautiful. Um, so Joy comes out. And, of course, she grabs him, hugs him. She's so happy to see him. Joey's crying. Jennifer's crying. Um, he just truly felt loved, you know. And it was it was so sweet to read that. Um, Joey and Wiley go across the street. And while they're gone, a man comes by in a black, um, long black stretch car. Um, and says, you know, it's the, I think his name is, it's either Cuccini. I can't remember. And I did not write it down. But the mafia boss guy comes by and just basically says, you know, I don't give second chances too often, um, but you make sure they never come back here again. And she was like, that's fine. We can get the hell up out of here. So a few days um, have passed. They're back in Tybee Island. While he's been writing, Joey's being Joey. Um, <laughs> everything's just, it is, it's normal. Um, she gets a phone call. It's from the stalker. She hasn't heard from him in a while. And they're saying, you know, we really need to talk. I know I've messed up. Time is running out. Of course, they still don't give their name. She's just like, please just tell me who you are. <laughs> they hung up. And then the phone rings again. It's a special agent. F it's an FBI agent. Her name's Sandra. Isaac knows her. And she lets her know, I know who your stalker is. We're going to meet 7 o'clock this evening. Basically, I'll give you all the information you need. Joel Bennett is the name of her actual father. He worked for the government. He was a scientist. He was highly sought after. Um, he wasn't from Russia. He was from another country. I want to say Poland, but I don't think that's right. But he was sought after by Russia. Um, he was brought to America given a new identity one of his stipulations was that he was not supposed to get married of course his ass got married to her mother and he tried to keep it a secret but of course they found out and whisked him away and he was off in alaska and so the deal with the mother was that they were going to give her um, a certain amount of money each month um, but she couldn't say anything and so she took the deal because she had this three month old baby you know with her husband and he's gone so he's super rich um, he invested a, a lot of his money in the stock market and that's where the money's coming from and she just told her you know next time he reaches out just say his name he'll talk to you so Pete and Jennifer finally have a conversation and he lets her um, know that your mother knew who your father was the whole time she was given a lot of money by the government 
Um, she could have lived like a queen, but she chose to live a modest life. She used the money to help other people, um, including him and his wife. She helped them put the down payment on their home. Um, so she helped a lot of people in the community. So she was a, a real angel, real saint. So um, she was concerned about Jennifer because she felt like Jennifer had the heart of her father, which was a hard heart. It worried her. Um, and now, of course, she sees why it is. Def it's def she's pretty much defrosted her heart, to be honest. It's not she's nowhere near as cold as she was before. That's gone. Um, she sees a car because her and Peter are out on the uh, they're talking and the guy asked, you know, I guess he pulled up and Joey comes out and he's like, you know, who are you? You know, and the guy's like, is, you know, anyone home? And he, Joey figures out real quick, this is the person that's been stalking Jennifer. And he's like, I ought to whack you. <laughs> so the poor man winds up passing out. And I'm like, oh, hell. And the poor boy was like, oh, shoot, I done gave him a heart attack. So Joel, Joel comes to on the couch, on her couch. And joey's like oh thank god the old man didn't you know <laughs> did die so then they have um have a conversation but she starts to freak out and she starts to clean so she sends uh joey to go get coffee and creamer because she's panicking she's spiraling so then uh wiley comes over and says nope you need to talk i'll mediate between the two of you but you got to have this conversation you know so he says that um he wasn't the same after he you know lost her mother um the government took him to alaska it, they were horrible conditions he kept trying to reach out to rosa until he realized you know that basically they could have it, it could affect rosa and the baby like they could have you know taken the key, her and the baby out and he didn't want anything bad to happen to him. So that's why he stayed away. Because that was a part of his condition. He had to stay away. He wasn't supposed to be making any kind of contact. And so as time went on. Basically he got discharged. Um, But for her it's just like it's too much. She wants to go outside. You know she's like I, I need a break. <laughs> so she go down, goes down to the pier. A few minutes later Wiley brings Joel. They have a nice heart to heart. Um, he basically was like, you know, he had cruel handlers. Um, you know, once he was let out, he just felt so ashamed and he didn't know how to approach her. And so when he got sick with cancer, when it was like he was thinking like he was on his way out of here, he was like, I need to at least tell her before I leave. Um, the money was always going to be hers. Um, he says, everything I have, you get when I die. You know, that's that's not changing. Um, his cancer is in remission. So he's like, you know, hopefully we can spend more time together. He was excited to get to know his grandson. Um, he knows about the Katie person. So, you know, he still got some old tricks up his sleeve, got some old connects. <laughs> um, Joey comes up and um, she tells him, you know, this is soon going to be my adopted son. And so Joey starts calling him Gramps and he likes it. Uh Jennifer told Viola about Joel and, you know, that she had asked him to move in because she was like, she just wanted to spend as much time with him as she could. And Joel was up for it, but she still wanted to talk to Viola. At first, Viola was freaking out because she was like, wait a minute. He was like an operative, like he could kill us. You know, she was going crazy. And um, once she met him, they really hit it off. They like each other. Um, so they're cool. Um, Joel and Jennifer, um, have walks and talk and things like that and they talk about different memories and about her mother um Viola, Viola gets engaged to Isaac he came in the diner one day stood up on the table and proposed to her big nice beautiful diamond ring and so then one of Jennifer's neighbors is like on the other side is selling their house because their sister and like is can't uh I guess take care of herself in Michigan so she's going to go up there and help you know move up there and so that's perfect because now she doesn't have to leave the beach because that was a sad thing Viola had she's like she loves the beach house and she didn't want to leave and so now she won't have to so she had told Isaac hey you need to call the <laughs> such and such because we need to get that house 
couple months passed they have a double wedding on the pier matthew gets engaged to a woman named pauline she worked at the um, grocery store she was a clerk really nice woman um joey's doing really good he's still doing his you know wise cracking but he's good he's really thankful to have the family that he always wanted um what else happened and that's pretty much how it ends so it was a beautiful sweet story now this isn't it wasn't erotica which is normally well, my you know our books have those elements to them this one didn't have it but I thought it was just a really sweet story nice little mystery it was really sweet so let me know what you guys think drop down in the comment section and let me know um if you are in the market for a beautiful journal or notebook I do have those on sale the link is going to be listed in the description section below as well make sure you like and subscribe and as always, I truly do thank you all for your support and thank you for tuning in to the Always Reading Book Club.